Hi everyone, the video that you're about to watch is extracted from an online Zoom session that I've conducted back in May. Uh, it's for an event that's organized by Asia Pack. Uh, Asia Pack is a local Singapore comic publisher. Uh, they have uh, allowed me uh, to release the recording on my own so uh, on YouTube channel. So basically, the uh, front and the end of the session is cropped away, removed. Uh, but basically, uh, I share about the process uh, of how I do my comics, uh, the platforms, the tools, uh, how to brainstorm, as well as getting started, like which platforms to choose uh, and what are the formats that you can uh, use for your web comics. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I have been drawing web comics since 2007 and you can check me out on uh, various social media channels and my ID is called Eva Comics, one word. And I upload new web comics every Monday, and I'm an author of four books. So, without further ado, I hope you learned something from this video. And don't forget to uh, comment if you have any questions, uh, and hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy my videos. And enjoy. So, of course, uh, in Singapore. The more popular choice is digital uh, because we uh, when you do a traditional method you need space to to store the papers and the papers will get yellow because our weather is quite humid uh, and also you need to uh, store your materials like pens and pencils so digital is actually our preferred method and it's a uh, mm, uh, more direct because this one you need to scan you still need to scan or take a photo into the platforms but this is already digitized. So you just export it to the JPEG file and you post it. So it's more, it's, it's more convenient. So the software, I always get this question on Instagram stories. Whenever I do a demo, someone says, what's the software you use? Okay, so there's actually um, uh, two popular comic making software. One is called Clip Studio Paint that I'm using. And then the other one is called Medibank Paint. Uh, Medibank Paint is a, new, is a newer comer. Uh, Clip Studio Paint has been around for more than 10 years. Uh, the predecessor was called Manga Studio. So uh, Minibank Paint is popular because you can get it for free on your iPad Pro, uh, you, but you have a little ad box at the side. So you have to pay a bit to remove the ads, but otherwise it's free to use. That's why it's very popular. Clip Studio Paint is not free to use. Uh, it's by subscription basis on iPad Pro, but it's, uh, there's a lifetime license for uh, laptop or PC or Mac. Then uh, there are other software, like for illustration purpose, like Photoshop or Procreate that some artists are using. Uh, but uh, those are, I think the comic functions are more limited. The more full-fledged comic functions like paneling, perspective, uh, which I will also demo later, is more available in this uh, comic, uh, it's a uh, comic, specific software. So for hardware-wise, uh, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq 16, but it's quite expensive. So I think um, if you are interested to, because sometimes I get questions on uh, what tablet to buy. So maybe I can show you the what tablets are available. So I think you can see my screen. Okay, so um, let's say it actually comes down with your budget, like how much money you have. So let's say you have only, uh, yeah. Okay, now I accidentally went full screen. Okay, so let's say you have a limited budget and you're a beginner, and you you know, you can actually start buying from us uh, uh into a Wacom into a tablet that costs uh, less than a hundred dollars. So this is the cheapest one that you can get, but you have to connect it to a PC or a laptop. Uh, of course, the bigger the better, but not as big as your screen, uh, not bigger than your screen, monitor screen. And of course, uh, if you are more skillful, you have uh, you can control your pencil better with your pressure. You have a better pressure sensitivity, then you get the Intuos Pro tablet. Okay, by the way, Wacom didn't sponsor me. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, then you have the Intuos Pro. Of course, the prices are more expensive. And then let's say you can afford uh, even a better tablet. Uh, you can get a Cintiq. So this Cintiq range includes a monitor screen, so that, which is the one that you always see me posting on my Instagram stories. 
uh, that you can draw directly on the screen itself like a tablet. So I think Cintiq 16 is enough for web comics because uh, the screen is big enough and it's uh, affordable enough. We do not need such a high resolution uh, like this uh, Cintiq Pro. These uh, Cintiq Pro are more expensive as well. I think these are more for uh, uh, detailed illustrations. So if you want, if you have more money and you like to draw on the go, you don't like to be desk bound all the time, and you like to or maybe draw on the sofa, then you can consider an iPad Pro. <laughs> okay, so sometimes people ask iPad Pro or Surface Pro is personal preference. My preference is iPad Pro because I have all, my, my whole equipment are all from Apple. So, uh, but you notice that the price is actually quite expensive. Uh, it's from $1,200 onwards. So versus, you know, a Cintiq tablet that you connect to a computer. But of course, this one is a tablet. Uh, it has its own uh, computing power and it's kind of fun to draw, but you have to take note to buy the Apple Pencil as well, which is cost like $200. So overall, you're going to pay like $1,400 for, uh, for iPad Pro. So therefore, uh, it really comes down with your budget and also uh, your, uh, how you're going to use the, ta uh, the tablet. So back to the slides. Okay, so some basic terminology in comics, uh, you don't have to take note of the blue, those in the blue color. You just need to see those in the yellow uh, balloons. So um, panels is actually the box that you see uh, in the comics. So let's say I say one panel comic or two panel comic or four panel comic is those boxes that is inside the comics. So we call it panel. Then uh, we have uh, speech balloons. So speech balloons are those uh, speech that come out from the characters. Uh, there's two kinds of uh, speech balloons, uh, monologue and dialogue. So monologue is like, oh, you know, you're thinking in your head, you're only talking to yourself. And also those narrations are called monologue. Dialogue is when you talk to someone else. And the speech bubbles are different between these two. And uh, sometimes uh, you can draw out the sound effects, like the bottom right, you see a Z. Yeah, that's drawn out. So some webcomic artists, they actually don't type anything. They just draw all the words out because sometimes it's more expressive to write. So you can try that too, but you need your handwriting need to be legible. Okay, so um, how I do my webcomics, this is one example. Uh, the first step is always to brainstorm. So I will have some ideas in mind. So this is actually a past comic strip that I had. Uh, the first idea was uh, the idea was to showcase the difference between the train etiquette for uh, with Japan and Singapore. So the first idea was to have a very quiet scene uh, sleeping in Japan, and then another one is wow, a lot of noise and things like that. Yeah. The second idea was the Korean drama. So like someone is, you know, watching the drama very loudly. And usually, you know, Korean dramas are very, uh, you know, dramatic. Uh, someone will die and something, something like that. So I, I, I decided to uh, have this as one of the scenes. And then another idea I have was that, uh, you know, I try to use the death stare, you know, stare at the person until, you know, he stopped playing the music or the game. So among these, these three, all these three ideas are the same, same, same uh, for the same uh, story. So I decided to choose this one. So you also notice that uh, brainstorming, you can either go forward or backward. It doesn't have to be, you know, always start from once upon a time or, you know, for the beginning. You can actually start from the ending as well. So you can do backwards as well. So once I decided that, okay, this is a better idea, I tried to figure out what went on in the previous scene the Japan side, and then I uh, finish up the sketch. So this is the idea. So always I will do the dialogues first, the speech bubbles first, because I want to make sure that the words can be read easily. Because sometimes, uh, you know, if your speech bubble is very big and the words are small, you're not making good use of the space, then maybe your speech bubble is very small, but you squeeze a lot of words inside, it's difficult to read. So that's why it's very important to do the speech bubbles first because the, the words may be very important to tell the story. Then after that, I ink the characters and then followed by the background. 
And then for the coloring, it's the same. I do the coloring of the main character first, and then the background. And then it's completed, and I post online and see how it goes. So this is the process. So now you know the process. How do you get started? Okay. So um, common question, like what, what do I draw? So <laughs> you can, I, here are some ideas I have for people who are not very sure what to draw. You can look at your own interests, your hobbies, uh, or your job, and what you're good at. So for example, um, someone is an air stewardess, and then she has a lot of interesting stories. Okay, maybe now a bit hard. Nah. <laughs> Last time I was following a web comic account, who she's an uh, air stewardess. So she have a lot of funny accounts with uh, customers on the plane. So that is actually based on the job. And uh, of course, also you can have it like what you can teach to other people. So for example, you are a doctor, um, then you have a lot to teach about people, or maybe you're a physician you, or a nutritionist, you have a lot of, of things to teach to people. You can actually draw it out as comics to teach people. So that's like the education part. Uh, there's also another way uh, you know, to find ideas is to find what kind of issues that you're frustrated about. So for example, uh, global warming, or maybe uh, about maybe co during COVID, some people are frustrated about wow, so many fake news, and they want to uh, they want to actually uh, combat those fake news. So they actually draw the comics to inform people. And also, you can look uh, at people around you. So actually, looking at people around you is after you have a uh, kind of an idea what to draw and you want some characters into your story, then you look at people around you to fit inside the story. So this is more for that. So I have a question from Fanny. How long does it take for me to draw a short comic uh, from brainstorm to color? So that's also a very a common question that I get. Uh, actually from brainstorm, uh, the brainstorm right, is it, really difficult to gauge because uh, sometimes <laughs> you know, it takes a long time, like weeks or months, or sometimes it can be just one hot shower and wow, I got an idea. Yeah, so it is very difficult to gauge from brainstorm. But let's say I have a sketch, final sketch done, and then I just need to ink color, then it's about uh, one or two days. Yeah, take more hot showers. <laughs> that one, it will, I will touch more on when you, are, you have writer's block, yeah. Okay, so which is now dealing with writer's block. So one of the common questions uh, that people ask me when I do the IG story uh, Q and A is, uh, how do you deal with writer's block? Okay, so you can picture yourself, right? Um, all the ideas that you have is actually from uh, what you know already, your knowledge as well as your experiences. So this is actually your database where you draw the ideas from. So if you don't have much experience and you don't have much knowledge, then there's nothing to draw from. That, you know, there's nothing to draw from. So, um, you know, some people, they ask, oh, do you, can you just meditate and then you have ideas? But no, it doesn't work that way because ideas are from external source and you, 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 you process inside. So it doesn't, if you have nothing here, there's nothing to process and nothing will come in. So basically, my advice is when you're stuck, you see more things, like maybe, or maybe watch more TV. Uh, yes, go out and explore. Uh, read read more things or maybe spy on your friend's uh, Facebook account. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> and then you listen, you listen maybe to radio and you move. So you basically go out and, ex uh, and experience more things. Then you have more things to uh, write about. Of course, if you still don't, don't know what to write, right? Uh, then you might want to work with a writer. So it doesn't have to be writer and artist together all the time. You can actually work with a writer. If you're a writer, you can also work with an artist. Uh, so it also works that way. Uh, so like I find that exercising or taking a walk or going for a hot shower is also helpful because you stimulate blood circulation to your brain. Uh, so sometimes that's why when you take hot shower, then sometimes you, you know, when you take hot shower, it's like, oh, I suddenly have an idea. Or maybe because the blood goes to your brain. Uh, that's my theory. Uh. Okay, so uh, after you're done, you know, you, you sort of know what to draw and then you're wondering, oh my God, like, who, who am I going to invite uh, to read my work? Who might be interested to read my work? So uh, actually, usually what you draw is what you like and what you know best. So your target audiences would be people like yourself. 
And because birds of a feather flock together, my theory, so actually your first uh, round of audience is your friends. So it is very important to make more friends. Yeah. Okay, so platforms. There are quite a lot of platforms out there. Of course, the most popular one is Facebook. Uh, right now, it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I just briefly touched on it. Uh, and as well as other comics uh, exclusive platforms like Webtoons, Tapestic, and Comicsology, etc. Uh, at the beginning, it is better to post on these platforms because it's easier to share. Yeah. Um, you, after you have a fan base, then you can direct them to your own website or blog or your Telegram channel. Um, that's because your website and blog or Telegram channel, it does not have the share feature. Like you cannot, uh, it's, not, it's difficult for you to gain more followers by itself. There's no share feature built in. Of course, website, you can say you can use search engine optimization to do keywords and then you can go to the website, but it doesn't have its own, uh, you know, you need to direct people in from somewhere. So it doesn't have its own uh, 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 a user base for you to tap on. So this is, that's why this is only after you have built a fan base and the top part, then you can draw onto the bottom part. Then you might be asking, uh, what, what for, right? What for you create a new place for, you know, the same thing. Uh, that's because, uh, we do not know if Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter might change policy. So we understand from Facebook that uh, in the early days, it was very easy to gain followers. But now, uh, you know, the reach has diminished and they want people to pay. Uh, so the reach has died, uh, died a bit. So of course, for me, I was busy doing my books at some point. So I didn't really manage Facebook uh, for a few years. I left it there. So that's why my, my reach dropped. Well, when I realized, and, and then it's a bit too late, so, but then I tried Instagram. So Instagram is working well, well uh, now, actually, um, but Instagram is bought by Facebook. So we do not know when <laughs> they will also uh, make the life difficult for us. Yeah. So um, that's why it's, easier, uh, it's better to diversify. So I will talk about each um, particular platform. What do you suggest? Okay, so I will touch on each platform later and I will touch on the formats as well. So actually, uh, you can choose uh, which one is better for you based on your target audience. So for the formats, the webcomic formats, uh, these are the common webcomic formats that you see. Uh, this is because it's uh, easy to share because the, the panels are big. So it's, it's uh, easy to read on the mobile screen and easy to share to more people. You don't need to take that much time to read. So uh, one panel, a comic is popular for those political comics and also those that deal with language jokes. Uh, two to four panels vertical uh, is what I use sometimes and also what the Chinese comic artists like to use. Uh, four panel comic is the most versatile. It can be used for print and also online which is also what a lot of webcomic artists use. They can also post panel by panel or, or, or the whole thing at once. The scrolling type is exclusive to webcomics and also what you commonly see on Facebook as well as uh, webtoons. So scrolling type uh, goes on and on forever. You just keep on scrolling. Uh, then there are also these two types uh, that you can see on webcomics and they actually uh, are similar to comic book format. Uh, so there's also five panel which Sarah Scribbles use and then the right side is a typical uh, comic format. Uh, but because the, there's more panels in a page, so it may be difficult to read if you have a lot of panels and a lot of words because you need to zoom in. And some software like uh, Instagram doesn't allow you to zoom in, so you need to you know, uh, reformat it. So I'll touch a bit about each uh, platforms. So Facebook, let's say your demographics and you're older like me, <laughs> you might want to do Facebook. Yeah. So the majority of my fan base is actually 25 to 34 years old. Um, higher spending power as well. Uh, and also Facebook is easy to share. So you just click share and you can just share over all of the all over the place. So it's easy to go viral. You can also post a lot of different content. It's very versatile. 
you can post links, you can post videos, you can put, post a chunk of text. Yeah, you can post anything. Um, but like I said, the organic reach is quite weak. Uh, unless your, your comic has a lot of shares, a lot of comments, then you know Facebook would think, oh, this one may be a good content, and then they'll boost it slightly more. Uh, but otherwise, it's actually quite um, not so good. So you can see that some uh, Facebook pages, they may have 1 million followers, but when the person posts anything, it's just 100 or 200 likes. It happens as well. So the formats available are these. So let's say you... Uh, uh, yeah, it's actually quite versatile. So let, but let's say you, uh, your 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 comics are more towards young people, younger younger people, younger age. Then they are actually not in Facebook. You have to go to Instagram. So Instagram, the demographics is younger. Uh, majority thirteen to twenty four years old. They are actually uh mostly students or young adults, uh, mostly females as well. Uh, and it's also easier to engage uh, these uh, audiences with the Instagram stories that you can also link to your Facebook page. So I would definitely recommend to do both if you can, uh, unless you know your 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 target audiences are you know more towards the young or more towards the old. Okay, the the negative the not so the con the the negative side to instagram is that you cannot have too many words so uh, it's difficult to read when there's too many words and you cannot post links you know you can't click on the link the advantage of instagram which you should uh use if you're using instagram is the usage of hashtags it's for people to uh discover you and there are also some accounts like some people they actually pay uh there are some uh uh webcomic account that share, specifically share webcomics from various accounts into their own, own account. And they have a large follower base, like maybe 200,000. So sometimes they allow you to pay them a fee for, you, for them to share your work in. So this is actually uh, you know, how you grow your, your uh, readers in Instagram. But usually it's good enough for, to start with hashtags first. So the formats of, uh, that you can post on Instagram is more limited than Facebook because you cannot zoom in to, the, to read the words. Uh, and the scrolling type uh, format uh, is actually um, carousel. It, I mean, it appears more like a carousel on Instagram. Uh, it's limited to 10 panels. So I can show you, and I think a lot of you should be familiar with uh, Instagram, but I can show an example from my work. So for example, this one, this is what we call a carousel format because it goes swipe, 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 but it's limited to 10 only. So you have to uh, plan for 10 panels. It can't be more because otherwise you cannot fit into uh, the format. So Twitter, um, no, are there times when you get affected? Okay, this one I'll send later. Okay, for Twitter, Twitter is a uh, text based, so it's good if you are good in writing. So um yeah, like I have a writer friend who, you know, they, they are always active on Twitter because they can write very well. Okay, but for us we are not good. Uh, but you know, there are some comic artists who use Twitter and they use it very well. I think it's also because they can write very well. Yeah, but the Twitter is more limited. You can only post one panel or one page at a time. You, I've tried posting like, you know, one panel following another because I try to copy the writer format, but it doesn't work that well. So um, these are only the formats available. You cannot do scrolling types. So a uh, webtoon is another, uh, is a very popular uh, webcomic uh, platform, uh, but the demographics I find is more, mainly young women. Um, but they are very serious comic readers. So they are more patient when you do a very long story. So uh, I can show you here. I, I am on Webtoons as well, but it's managed by my fan. So over here, you can see that the most popular genre is romance because uh, most readers are young women. Uh, about half of it is romance. So, uh, it, you know, it, you can actually do a very uh, longer story because 
the users in webtoons are more serious about reading comics. So this is the scrolling type format. Yeah. And you can go on and on and on. But uh, for because they are very comic, uh, very serious comic readers, so it's better to keep to a schedule. You need to have a schedule of posting so they will subscribe and they'll continue to read. So this one might have more commitment than other more casual social media database uh, uh, platforms. So let me go back to the slides. Okay. So now the last part to my getting started uh, is monetization. So of course, when we start web comics, we do not want to draw for the sake of making money. It's usually passion first. We draw because we like to draw. And when readers feel that feel our passion, that we like to tell stories and we like to entertain them, they'll be more likely to support us. So monetization is actually the, the last thing that you want to think of. But of course, if you can make a money from your hobby, it's good. Okay. So here are actually some of the ways that I monetize through my web comics. Um, the first one is commission, uh, from going from the top to the least. So um, the top is commission work and influencer marketing. So influencer marketing, you can think of something like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the work salary man. So they actually work with some financial uh, pl planning uh, tools or you know, institutions. Uh, or insurance agents to actually uh, sponsor the content. So it's like a, you know, influencer, but it's a comic character or it's a comic story. Uh, commissions is, of course, if you're, you draw very well, then, you know, companies will, you know, engage you to draw for them. Uh, be, I've been drawing for uh, schools. I've been drawing for government and government affiliated agencies, sometimes on, for social media campaign and sometimes for print. And the next uh, income stream is Patreon. Patreon is uh, like a Kickstarter. So basically, uh, actually one of them is Esme is here. Esme is my patron. <laughs> so she, uh, you actually pledge an amount to your creator every, uh, for every post or for every creation or every month you can set and then to support your favorite creators. So there's other platforms as well, such as Coffee. Uh, this the it's very similar. It depends on the demographic. So I find that coffee is more for younger uh, demographics. Uh, Patreon is for older demographics. Uh, also, I give talks and conduct workshops sometimes, like this one. <laughs> yeah, so I also get paid. Uh, and sometimes I license comics. So occasionally I get requests from uh, publishers overseas to get permission or li purchase license to use my comics for their magazines or their publication usually about uh, teaching about cultural difference. Yeah, so I also get paid there as well. Uh, of course, selling of comics. <laughs> a lot of people thought, hey, my income mainly is from comic books, but actually it's wrong. That's the least income stream <laughs> available. Yeah, so um, yeah, because in Singapore it's quite difficult. Uh. So I thought that, you know, my latest book will be more because it's so worldwide, but you have the pandemic and the Tokyo Olympics delayed. So bad luck lah for me. <laughs> uh, and of course I sell merch as well. Merch is merchandise. So like the one I'm wearing, yeah, as me also bought. <laughs> so um, you can also, um, if you don't want to deal with this merch, you can actually uh, get an account from uh, websites like Redbubble, Society6, Threadless, uh, basically, you just upload uh, your design and people just buy from there and it's fulfilled by another company. So you just need to just upload and direct people to buy your merchandise. So I think some artists, they use it very well. They earn quite a lot from it. Uh, of course, there are some artists like me, just earn a bit. Yeah. So that's the end of my lecture. Yay. Yeah. So now it's the demo and Q&A time. <laughs> Okay, uh, before I open the floor to all the other questions, there, there are two pending questions. Uh. The one by uh, Dion and another one by Elvis. Elvis is regarding the money boost, uh, post boosting. The... Okay, uh, yeah. 
All right. Uh, I'll answer the um. Maybe Dion, Dion yeah, one Dion first, first. Uh, because first she posted first. Okay, so for Dion, uh, are there times when you get affected by the amount of likes and shares? Uh, actually, I don't. But uh, sometimes, uh, in my early days, I do lah. Early days, I do lah. You know, it, because uh, it's actually an indication of how well your comics are doing, because the feedback is immediate. So, uh, let's say if you, um. Uh, you know, you usually get maybe 500 shares and then suddenly you only get 200. Then you'll be thinking like, what, what went wrong? Uh, people don't like this content. So, uh, but then, you know, you, you have to, uh, you know, see it as feedback and just change accordingly. Um, uh, I used to be affected by some critics as well, but now I just learned to not see them. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll read them. If they are written politely, I, I'll read them. Yeah, but if they start to curse me, then... Block. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay, to answer Elvis's question regarding Facebook, what points should be taken into account when it comes to deciding how much money? Okay, um, how much money? Uh? I never really like to boost post unless it's a very important event. Uh, for example, my book signing last year, actually, I think I paid $50. I think $50 to reach to my own fans who already like me because <laughs> Facebook uh, did not, uh, because I get a lot of feedback, like sometimes my fans will say, I didn't know about this new book. When did you have this new book? But I've been posting about it repeat repeatedly for many months and they still don't know because Facebook, uh, you know, if you stop interacting with that page, then Facebook will stop showing you the updates from that page. So sometimes no choice. Uh. So basically my, uh, if I do pay, which actually I don't like to pay, uh, because I don't know if it will reach the, to the correct people, then it's around fifty dollars. Uh. What type of con you, Do you think it was worth it? That the uh, based on your past experience. Uh, it depends on what you're boosting. So let's say I'm boosting an event like my sign. Uh, for my book signing, it was worth it. Uh, because people, uh, a lot of people did turn up, and there was a queue. Um, but let's say if I'm going to use it to boost a regular comic. Um, so let's say the second part of uh, Elvis' question, the type of content to post. So you will notice that Facebook, they will, uh, when, you, when they think that you, you know, when the content reaches more than 90%, like, uh, they'll, they'll give a prompt, like, would you like to boost this post to reach more people? Because it's, uh, it's gaining more than uh, 90% uh, or something like that of your, your, your it's, it's a more popular post. So let's say if the post is already uh, very popular, you can see that it's, it's more likes than usual, then it makes sense to boost that because more, even more people read. But if it's like already not that many, then you know that it's actually not a strong content. So if you boost, then it's very limited, you know, like the magnifying effect, yeah. It depends on your objective uh, and also uh, the type, if it's worth to boost it. Uh. So of course, uh, if you have very limited money, uh, just boost those that are really popular. Okay, the Fanny, Fanny, yes, Fanny. Fanny asks, are there any magazine or publications specialized in comics in Singapore? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, Actually, there, uh, there are, there are. Uh, uh, do you, do you, uh, Eva, you got any, <laughs> <laughs> any companies you want to share? <laughs> because you yourself is... Uh, yeah, let me originally, think. Originally, uh. originally you, <laughs> you were self-published, correct? Yeah, I was self-published because uh, the local comic publisher doesn't want to self-publish my work. <laughs> Yeah, but they, they don't specialize in comics, actually. The one that specialized in comics uh, pretty closed down, that's Chang Yi. <laughs> uh, magazine, uh, mag we do not have a comics magazine in Singapore, to answer your first question. Uh, we also do not have, a, we have a publisher that uh, exclusively publish comics, but it's owned by Japanese. Uh, Shoga Kukang. Uh, yeah, they are doing with the Kiasu also. Yeah, right now. so they are the only one that only comics. Uh, for example, as Asia Pack have comics and other 
Competition. Other titles, yes. Yeah, other titles. So they are not, you know, just yeah, mixed. mixed. Yeah. Mixed comics. But I think doing more, right? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Rick, Robin, Kekna, uh, Robin asks, I do have my web comics, so when do I get to show them? Hmm. You can show them whenever you have, you know, time. Yeah, just actually, uh, the first step is to show it to the world which can be quite daunting for a first timer. So of course, uh, when you first post it up there, uh, people might not even see it. So you just get your friends who you trust to look at it first and maybe give you feedback. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, we always need to do the first step, then we can learn from it and what to improve. So you just need to just get it out there. Yeah, then we see how it goes. Okay, Dion asks again, is it better to focus on a few fixed characters or random designs of your own unique style? I think, Dion, you are trying to ask if you uh, want to do um, a collection of various characters or just focus on a few. So it depends on your strategy. So I know for some artists, Instagram, Okay, so for example, um, some artists I know, they actually uh, do a var var various characters. Ah, not working. Oh, it's working. Wait, maybe I have two here. Perry, Fellow. So for example, this uh, very popular webcomic artist, um, H -O, it's a bit, um, okay lah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for a young audience. <laughs> um, you can see that the characters are not the same. They actually uh, is a variety of characters. Um, but the theme is the same. It's always dark humor. <laughs> yeah, a bit sarcastic and sadistic sometimes. Uh, kind of funny. Of course, some characters appear like uh, reappear again. But you know, you notice that their their characters kind of different. So for them, the the strategy is just to have a very uh, story based than character based. For this, right, it's more difficult when you do merchandise unless you have uh, you no know, big data, big uh, follower base like this one. Uh, it has 9, 9, 9, 294,000 followers. So the fan base is big. So it's easy for uh, the artist to do merchandise as well. But for me, uh, not that big. So I prefer you, uh, character based. Uh, which is my uh, character IP that I'm wearing, so that people are more familiar with my characters and build a stronger bond with them. Yeah. I also have the same issue, like, am I not good enough in the beginning? Uh, but we have to deal with it. Uh. Yeah, you know, it's a... Uh, we, we can never fly. I mean, we can never, like, you know, um, if you are... Let's say you take swimming, for example, it's not possible that you know how to swim once you are in the pool. You need to practice first. Okay, so you need to practice, practice, then you gain more confidence. So it's the uh, same baby thing. Baby steps. Huh? Yeah, baby steps. Maybe if you're afraid to get criticism from outside, then maybe you start internal group first. Maybe you have a WhatsApp group or Telegram channel with your friends that you trust. You start with them first and get them to input your comics. Uh, then after that, you gain more confidence, you improve, hopefully, and then you post to a bigger group. Or you can post onto your own Facebook uh, friends account only. That means only for your friends. Then, you know, or maybe you can make it public, but your own account first. And if they really like it, then you can, you know, take a bigger step to post outside. Dara has the follow up where the last question is going in or trying many things or just a pretty solid idea before the beginning like, <laughs> like, like do you plan how much do you need to plan before jumping uh, in you definitely need to know who your audiences are la. that's that's for me la. so that you can actually plan i'm i'm a planner la. i'm a marketing person la. you know like I, I always plan who is gonna read this you know who will appear appeal to uh, so um, it's definitely let's say you only have limited time you only have time to do a few comics like you know 
limited ammo, you want to target into a specific area. Yeah, you you target too many things, then you know you're not sure what you you, you should do. Uh. Of course, if you have more time, if you have time, then you want to do everything. Yeah, then then go ahead do each of it, and then you see which one it works for you. Yeah, but if you don't have that much time, I suggest just pick one or two to work on. So we have another question by Joseph Lee. Mm. So he asked that uh, you have tried various series in the past. So then do you stop doing a series because you feel it doesn't do well? Or is it because you have a new or better idea for a new series? Uh, I would actually, um, it's mainly that I, I, I either run out of ideas of that series or I don't think it's doing well. Then I will actually change to a new series. So, for example, there was a year, um, there was a time I do a series which I am actually a Hui Fu, rich lady. So that one is in 2008. This Gong Zhu the, the one in color, vertical. So this series, right, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. So eventually I feel that people are not reading this, this, this series. So I actually changed to one called the Smarty CS. CS means civil servant because I was teaching at the time. So um, then this series didn't work well. <laughs> not many people read. That changed again to another type of format. So actually I changed the series because uh, I think the, it, the readers didn't, uh, it does, not enough people were reading it. So the last question we have is by Elvis Chong. Do we have advice or thoughts on webcomic artists who have a focus on paragraphs? Like, mm -hmm. like long text, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he tend to have character monologue, dialogue that can be quite lengthy to express in perspective, such as Calvin and Hobbes. So is there a value left in comics that use prose as a device? <laughs> a lot of words. Um, I think there are some like, comics with a lot of words, huh? but you need to think about whether or not it's interesting enough for people to read. Because you know, I have writer's friends friends who are writers, and they post a lot of text. Uh, but people read because it's well written, it's interesting enough, and you know, it's engaging enough. So um, for me, you notice that I don't use a lot of text. I'm not a text person. So <laughs> naturally, I am not attracted to a lot of text. Um, but some people like it. Uh. So I think you can try. Uh, mm. So, so far, that's all. Then uh, should I unmute everyone? <laughs> so, because we left with oh, five okay. minutes. Yep, so I'll do so. Uh.